Hello there, everyone. We're going to get started in a minute or two. I want to give folks just a, another minute or so to get into the webinar here. So hang tight. More coming soon. One more minute, we'll get started. All right, everyone, welcome. Hello, my name is Paul Fariga. I am the president and chief storyteller at WordWrite. Thank you for joining us for this webinar, the C-Suite Guide to Storytelling. Whether you're watching us live or whether you're watching the recording, we are truly glad that you are here with us today. We're gonna to be talking about the responsibilities and the importance of sharing the story, the vision, the mission, if you will, of an organization and why that is so important to the ultimate decision makers in an organization, those folks who happen to be in the C-suite. So let's get started. I frequently begin a talk or a webinar or a presentation by sharing these four words because it sets the context for what we're gonna discuss during the rest of our time together today. And that is the power of stories to move hearts and minds and in a business context to deliver results. I often say that storytelling is the original communications medium. No batteries required. All you need is a brain and an imagination. And for most of us, we first experienced the power of stories as young children which is why I have these four words on the screen. Once upon a time, I know when I was a child, the oldest of four kids, uh, growing up in the middle-class household in Cleveland, Ohio, one of the nightly rituals was bedtime stories, right? So I heard once upon a time over and over and over again. And even today, as a fully formed adult, I have memories of those stories, right? And that's why I share this because stories make an indelible imprint. Maybe some of you are thinking back to your own once upon a time moments earlier in your life, or perhaps as parents, you're, you're thinking about some of the moments you share with your children today as you go through the once upon a time exercise. Well, here's the thing. Storytelling isn't just for storytellers like me people who aren't normally associated with the concept of telling stories understand the power of stories. And while Jeff Bezos is now on to things such as flying in outer space, I think it's telling that somebody who's built one of the most successful companies in the world understands the power of storytelling. By the way, this is a quote that he gave in an interview to the Hollywood Reporter, not a publication you would normally associate with well, the tech company back when Amazon Prime was launched. Very interesting. In our work at our firm, WordWrite, our wellspring is not only great minds in marketing and public relations, but also folks who are known for being business visionaries. One of them is Simon Sinek. 
Sinek's written three books, the first of which is called Start With Why. That book was an outgrowth of a TEDx talk he gave in 2009. And this is one of the things he said during that talk that we find to be true in more than two decades of working with more than 250 clients at WorkRight. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And what you do simply proves what you believe. I mean, think about it. There's competition in almost every field for almost every endeavor that we can think of in business. There are table stakes, right? And we'll talk about those in a couple of minutes. The difference is the character and nature of the organization that a client or a potential employee is going to join and work with. Now, a lot of times in business, we think that stories are just for movies and okay, here's Andrew Stanton from Pixar. However, I have to say that this quote, which he, uh, which comes from a, a TED talk that he gave uh, a little while ago, by the way, these are hot links you're seeing in the presentation. You will get the presentation. You'll be able to watch his, his full talk, which is really quite funny. In our work with clients though, in business, we've learned that what he has to say here just doesn't apply to Pixar movies. It applies in business. We've got to make people care emotionally, intellectually, aesthetically, whatever is most important to you and your organization, your business, your industry, make people care. And certainly in a time like now when we're in the great resignation or this talent war, whatever you want to call it, thinking about your team and people you want to join your team. How are you going to get them to care about your organization? How are you going to get them to want to join your organization? Now, our work at WordWrite is primarily with companies that sell to other companies. A lot of times when people do think of storytelling in business, they think about great brands, so Southwest or Nike or Walt Disney. I think it's fascinating that this study, which is not new, done by Google and CEB Marketing, found that the connections to B2B organizations emotionally are actually stronger than with B2C brands. This is part of what animates our work with our clients. You may think that what you do is technical. You may think it might be hard to understand. You may believe that potentially it's difficult to describe, but guess what? There's a payoff there because people you want to reach are going to make an emotional connection with your organization if you do your job well. Now, let's speak about you for a little bit here, right? Are you in the right webinar? You are, if you are a person in your organization who's ultimately accountable for results. And, and what I mean by that is, the successful communication of the value of what your organization does determines your success as a leader. In other words, whoever it is that you report to are going to be evalu evaluating you in large measure on how well you're communicating the story of your organization. And so the people who hire you, your prospects and customers, and the people you lead need to know exactly what's different what's unique, what is the value of your organization? You know, at the end of the day, if you're a leader, it's up to you to ensure that your organization's value is not only communicated, but that it's driving results. Now, when we work with clients, frequently what we find is that there are certain organizations that'll benefit most immediately from the help that we can provide. And here are some examples of situations that we've come across in our work with our great clients over the years. Maybe there's a sales issue. Maybe as a leader, you're just darn frustrated that the way folks talk about the organization is inconsistent. Now, whether that's your team or whether that's the people you're trying to sell to or partner with. Oh, I can't tell you how many times I've worked with CEOs and they are just so frustrated that the folks they want to sell to can't see the difference between them and their competitors. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, maybe you're having trouble hiring folks or, or retaining people, right? 
maybe you're not really sure what your marketing strategy is or you don't know what the ROI is on your marketing. These are all reasons that we frequently see why organizations will come to us or they will start thinking about what is my story, how well am I communicating it, and what is it doing for me? Frequently, when we work with organizations, the leaders tell us these are the things they're looking for. They want alignment. They want folks to be on the same page in terms of sharing the organization's story. Now, we're not talking robots here. They're not looking for people to do a copy and paste or to speak robotically in the same words and phrases about the organization. It's got to be authentic and it's got to be in the words and phrases used by the individuals who represent the organization. But you want alignment and you also want it to be clear. You want folks to say, I know who that company is. I know what that organization is about. I know what they do. And you want to know if you're communicating your story through marketing means that the spend is actually driving sales and producing results. And yes, it's our firm belief and it's based upon our experience and we can demonstrate it. The best possible measurable results come when you're communicating your story and you're doing so in a way that's unique, compelling, and memorable. All right, now, this webinar is for C-suite leaders especially. If you're not in the C-suite, we're glad you're here, but we are especially speaking to those in the C-suite. Here's something that every top leader knows in any organization. It's awful lonely at the top. At the end of the day, the responsibility for the organization, a huge part of it, if you're not the CEO, lands on your desk. You are accountable for producing results. Whoever you report to wants tangible measures of success. They don't want pablum. They want the talk walked as well as talked. So you understand that you have to stand out from your competitors to succeed. Now, the good news is, as we've learned in our work with clients over the years, that you can do that by focusing on your most valuable marketing asset, your story. So let's talk about your story. Now, what we've learned at our firm is it's not just any story. As business leaders, we tell lots of stories all day long. We need somebody to get something done by the end of the day. We're mapping out quarterly uh, projections or goals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those are small s stories. We call them small s stories because once they're done, the need for the story is over. The capital S story stands above the rest. It answers four fundamental questions about your organization. Number one, why would somebody buy from you? Number two, why would somebody work for you? Number three, why would somebody invest in you? Number four, why would somebody partner with you? These are critical answers that define the character and the nature of your organization. They're more than the task that needs to be done today, and they are important to the future of your organization long after you've done whatever you've done in this particular quarter to achieve results. Now, a capital S story can be categorized. There are many, many types of capital S stories. I've just listed here five of the most common that we frequently see. You'll see quite often, frankly, that the story is about how the company was founded. What is it about the organization that was unique, the need that resulted in it coming into being? Another common capital S story, what's the dream, the vision, the passion that moves things forward? Maybe there's something that the organization has invented that's unique. Frequently, and this happens often in the tech space, you'll have a company come up with a concept, a product or a service, and it's something that's nice to have. And then something in the marketplace of ideas happens and all of a sudden, it's time. It's a coming of age and people suddenly want what you do. Or it's an epiphany. And the example I often give is 3M, right? They invented post-it notes by accident, right? They were looking for a certain kind of glue and they found a glue that didn't really stick very well. It sort of kind of did. And that's wound up being the glue that powers post-it notes, right? So it could be something that you didn't expect, an epiphany. That can be your story. Now, 
in working with CEOs frequently, one of the questions that we'll get is, okay, I now understand that I need to share the company story. And by the way, most CEOs and C-suite leaders we work with, they know the company has a story and they may know the story well, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes. But they'll say, where does that story go? These are just examples. For sure, it should be on your homepage. Now, one of the things we say at WordWrite is that in this era, and this is especially true post-COVID, your website is your digital storefront. Even if you're a B2B company, think of it as a storefront. That's the first place people are going to go and learn about your organization. And if your story is not there, boom, people are going to bounce right out. Now, if they are interested in the company and they get beyond the homepage, the next place they're going to go, the about page. Tell me more about the organization. Now, I'm working on another webinar right now uh, in a specific industry, and I picked three mid-sized firms in a city, and I pulled their about paragraphs. And I've got a little exercise that we do where I ask the participants to match the company with the about paragraph. Guess what? You can't do it because it's all just gibberish. There's not a real story there. Is your about page providing a real story, the story, the capital S story about your organization? And then there's some other examples here. Certainly it needs to be on your company LinkedIn page, but also your leadership. Uh, press release boilerplates, you know, at the end of every press release, there's this little paragraph about this company or about this organization. Is your story in there or is it just a bunch of marketing gibberish, right? Certainly your social media profiles, sales materials, and let's not forget, especially in today's environment, all of the communications to your current team and people you want to join your team. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some idea starters to start teasing out your story. You may well think that you have a pretty good handle of your story, and congratulations if you do. But here are three ways to get a little bit deeper. Let's set the context here. First, remember the point from Simon Sinek, why? As I said earlier, the audiences that deal with organizations of business are going to be asking themselves, what's the character and nature of this organization? And certainly, you know, in the professional services, we do work with accounting firms and law firms. Things don't always go according to plan, right? And so the prospect or the client is asking themselves, if things go poorly, are these the kind of people that I want to be working with? What's the character and nature of the organization? Again, and this happens, we see this in manufacturing and other fields as well as professional services, but take law as an example. You can't be a lawyer if you don't have a license. It's nice to have certifications behind your name. That's a table stake. That's not the difference. The difference is the story, right? What's different about firm A versus firm B? Now, here's the thing that we've learned. C-suite leaders are really great at sharing the specifics of the firm. And, you know, you want people across the organization to be able to share at least their piece of the overall story, right? If not the overall story. But if they don't have the format, if they don't have the context to do that, they're not going to be successful. Now, the good news is, as human beings, we're hardwired for stories and specific stories that we call story archetypes. Now, what are archetypes? We call them at our firm synaptic shortcuts. Why do we do that? Because I don't have to explain to you. If I say to you, we've got a new client at WordWrite and they're in a highly technical business, but let me tell you, it's a David and Goliath story. Well, you don't have to be a biblical scholar to know that's the underdog archetype, right? By the way, I love this particular uh, painting here. It's actually from the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. This is Michelangelo's uh, depiction of the underdog uh, taking on Goliath and winning. So archetypal stories. We've learned in our work that there are literally thousands of variations on these archetypal stories. And there are 12 common families you can see here on the screen. And again, you'll be getting copies of the slide deck afterwards. This is our take on some of the characteristics of archetypal stories. 
in our work with organizations over the last two decades, what we've learned is most organizations in business combine aspects of two or maybe more archetypes. This is part of the way that those variations become unique, right? Now, this is where the specifics of your organization and your firm matter because those characteristics, those traits of your firm, I hate to call them this, but people in business do, your features and benefits, that's where you need those because you combine that with the archetype that fits your organization to create your unique capital S story. So to just give you some examples here, here's a couple of organizations we've worked with. Archetypes don't stand alone, all right? They're married with the specifics of what you do to create a unique, compelling, and memorable story. The accounting firm at the top there, uh, they work with us on story crafting. Their archetypal story is that of the sage. Think of the all-knowing, right? Okay, and that's because they're an expert in their industry. Well, they're accountants, and you don't see the word sage all over their website. Take a look at the tagline, a higher grade of accountants. That's how that's brought out. The Center for Victory is another organization we work with. They do coaching and leadership development. For that organization, we did the story crafting process all the way front to back up to and including the logo. Notice the logo. It's a leaf instead of the O in victory to symbolize personal growth along with a thumbprint. And in this case, the archetype is the champion, but not, not the champion that, hey, look at me, I won the race. It's like the coach, right? Great athletes have coaches who get them to win, to cross the finish line first. And that's what the Center for Victory does. Two examples of unique, compelling, and memorable stories using the power of the capital S story. All right, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna give you three ways to begin to uncover your capital S story. Number one, we've got a version of the exercise we use in our own trademark process, story crafting. And Trey, you can put that in the uh, chat right now. So uh, those of you who are watching live will be able to download that right now. And if you are watching this webinar as a recording, you'll be able to download that as well. We'll provide a link for you. So the goal here is to get the leadership team together and answer these four fundamental questions. Why do you think people buy from us, work for us, invest in us, partner with us? You know, what we've seen is that this helps stir the imagination of the leadership team, right? Surfaces new ideas. Example, you can be sitting in a room in an organization today and sales thinks that the story is this and marketing thinks it's that and the CEO thinks it's something else. Who's on point right now if you're in a talent crunch? HR. Well, maybe HR has a great version of the story that everybody else needs to know about, right? This puts you on the same page and gives you all the raw material to begin to tease out and develop your capital S story. A couple other examples. Sometimes in business, it's hard to think about the organization unless you personify it. So get the leadership together. Who are we today? If we were a person, what kind of person would we be? What demographics might describe us? What's our worldview? To get a little more business specific, how do we like to interact with our clients? Third example, try metaphors and similes. This is an exercise just to get ideas flowing. Our firm reminds me of fill in the blank. Our company is like what? If only we were more or less, and to give some comparison in a business context, our company is like this and our competitor is like that. So three simple exercises to get you started in uncovering and developing your capital S story. Now, just a, a few comments about WordWrite. You've gotten a sense of some of the things we do, uh, but why we care so much about this, and then we're, we're going to get to some uh, questions and answers. All right. So we wrote the book. Um, I'm doing the webinar today from my desk. You can see the book there, Finding Your Capital S Story. And we've developed a trademark process to help organizations uncover, develop, and then share their capital S story, their most valuable marketing asset. 
We've worked with many companies to do this over two decades in business. And at core, we have a team of great storytellers. In addition to myself, we have other people on the team, our director of content, uh, vice president, others who spend time as journalists. We understand how to create the beginning, the middle, and an end of a story that connects with audiences and delivers results. This is just a little bit about our process, talks about who it's best for, why it works. Um, we've talked about some of these reasons already today. I'm not gonna dwell on them, but this is just a good capsule summary for you if you're looking for it later. All right, before we get to questions and answers, three things that I would ask you as a C-suite leader. Number one, and maybe you feel like you really know this story well, and kudos to you if you do, but are you happy with the way people in your organization are sharing the story? Number two, do you feel that your vision for the organization is reflected in how your team is talking about what you do, or maybe how your marketing is talking about the organization to prospects? And most importantly, well, why or why not, right? <laughs> are you happy or aren't you? If you're happy, great. That's awesome. But if you're not, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to attack this issue and deal with being undifferentiated in the marketplace of ideas, whether you're competing for talent or customers or investors or partners, right? We've got another tool for you to start to answer those questions. This is our marketing checklist. Trey, you can put that in the uh, chat pane there and folks feel free to download that. It's just one page, a lot of great information on there to get you started and thinking about whether or not your story is being shared in a way that's going to drive results. Now, if you're not sure of the answers on the marketing checklist or the three big questions I put up there, I'm happy to connect with you by phone or video and just talk it through. I'm happy to spend half an hour with you. Uh, we have lots of additional resources that we can share with you to help uncover your capital S story. I'd be glad to do that. All right. This is the book. There are links here. Again, you're going to get this um, slide deck sent to you for being in the webinar. And we thank you very much for participating today. All those are live links there. The downloads we've looked at are available at that link. Um, Trey, there, you can put the third one out there. There's a, a third one, folks, that's takeaways from today's uh, webinar. And hopefully that'll be helpful to you. There we go. In the chat. Here. All right. Excellent. We are ready to take questions. And I thank you for being with us today before we start this. All right, I see we got a few here. Thank you very much. What are some factors that contribute to such strong emotional connections in B2B relationships compared to B2C? Well, great question. I, I highly recommend you take a look at the, the Google study, which is linked um, in the, the slide deck. One answer to that question that I think is really important. Think about lawyers or accountants as, as examples. Typically, surveys show that they are the most trusted advisors in the C-suite. Uh, and organizations leaders will be sharing the kind of information that is really sensitive with those folks. So the emotional connection there is, is driven by the kinds of considerations I described earlier, which is if things don't go well, <laughs> are these the kind of folks that I want to work with? And when you find the right people to advise you on legal matters or accounting matters, right? That's where you start to get that kind of emotional connection. Another example would be healthcare. Um, this is more uh, B2C than, than B2B. Well, a B2B example 
uh, would be if I'm looking to partner with somebody to develop a drug or develop a treatment regimen, right? You're working with people's lives and you want to make sure that you're working with somebody that you really can have an emotional connection with because you're dealing with something extremely sensitive. So there you go. All right. Here's a, another great question. How, how do you even get started? Well, uh, <laughs> that's a great, great question. So I'm obviously one of the reasons we do these webinars is, is we believe in what we do and it's to share what we do. So uh, reading the book is a great thing. We also have a great series of explanatory videos uh, called Story Crafters Studio on our, our YouTube uh, channel. Um, Trey, I don't know, maybe you might be able to put that in the, in the chat there so people can take a look at that. These are all, there's about 14 or 15 of them, and they're very short, two or three minutes, and give people an opportunity uh, to get started. We also have uh, content on our website that, that's free. The very basic issue, really, we tried to distill in the handout that we've, we've shared today, uh, which answers those four fundamental questions. Frequently, when we do the exercise as part of our story crafting process, you know, very smart people will say to us, I don't know how good this is. It's not a tagline. Well, it's not supposed to be. This is raw material. The way that we're talking about your story is it's a way of surfacing things. It's, it's not designed, although as the couple of examples I shared, ultimately you do get to, to um, a point where, thank you, Trey, I see that uh, Trey shared the link to our StoryCrafter Studio uh, videos. Ultimately, you do get to a point where if that's what's right for you, you can work on a tagline or a logo or whatever. But where you start from is defining the characteristics of, of the organization. Uh, you know, earlier in the slide deck, when we showed the archetype wheel um, and the 12 different families of archetypes, there's characteristics that we've put in there. And again, you'll, you'll get that in the slide deck. And, and that can be helpful to you in terms of, okay, well, if I'm a sage or a ruler or one of the other 12 archetypal families that we have there, what are some of the characteristics I'm looking for? And do those match with our organization? All right. What if my organization's C-suite isn't made up of natural storytellers? Another great question. Folks, here's, here's an issue we see a lot. It's human nature. You have an organization led by a CEO who may be a great CEO, but maybe they're not a great storyteller, right? But the human reaction is, well, Paul's the boss, so Paul should be the storyteller, right? That's not always the case. A great example would be a tech company. You might have somebody who's a fantastic inventor who comes up with a great idea, but they're not a CEO. They don't want to be a CEO. They want to be an inventor. So you hire a CEO. The CEO helps scale the company, right? When it comes time to tell the story about your invention, shouldn't it be the inventor who's telling the story and not the CEO, right? Isn't that what people are going to want to know? Why did this person come up with this idea? Where did this crazy solution to this difficult problem originate, right? So it's not always the C-suite who needs to be the storyteller. Although, you know, that is where that the hand needs to be on the tiller and folks need to be guiding the direction of the organization. But you don't need to be a great storyteller in the C-suite to understand the importance of the capital S story and storytelling and to drive things forward. All right, um, another great question here. What are some of the most effective platforms to leverage C-suite stories and thought leadership today? Excellent. So let's take a look at social media first. The, the, the place where most B2B organizations and C-suite leaders have the most comfort is LinkedIn. And that's probably the best place to be. Now, LinkedIn is not Facebook and not TikTok, that's for sure. But in recent years, the capabilities of LinkedIn have advanced to be more, let's say, video friendly, more accessible. And there are a lot of tools on LinkedIn that allow you to share your thought leadership. As an example, we've had Facebook Live for quite a while. There's now LinkedIn Live, so you can do live broadcasting. If you have 
enough followers and a great enough LinkedIn presence, you are able to use LinkedIn Live. Certainly, LinkedIn Pulse, which anybody can use, which is the publishing platform of LinkedIn, is a great tool for sharing thought leadership. When you're talking about complex B2B organizations, which is where most of our expertise resides, what folks are, are buying, whether they are prospects, or customers, or clients, or whether they're folks looking to join the organization, they're, they're buying what the leadership knows and thinks and believes. They're buying that why. So platforms that allow you to articulate your why are the best place for you to be in order to share your thought leadership. And again, LinkedIn is a great place. Certainly earned media is another great place to be. Uh, we like to say at our firm that every B2B vertical has its version of the New York Times, that one publication. And yes, many of them today are primarily online. That's just the way of the world. But there's that one publication that it seems like everybody, you know, the one news outlet that everybody turns to for information in that industry. Those are also good places to be sharing your thought leadership by writing articles, by being interviewed, et cetera, et cetera. All right, let's see how we're doing here. More questions. I'll take this opportunity to mention that if we don't have more questions now live, there, uh, of course, my email address is there. And when you receive the materials after the webinar, we'll have additional opportunities for you to reach out and chat with us. You know, in writing the book, um, I mean, there's a lot more that I could say about this topic, uh, but it's probably best delivered um, in one-on-one -on -one conversations. And I'm happy to have those with you if you're interested in doing that. All right, have we gotten to that point in the webinar where we've exhausted? the uh, live questions. I'm just gonna take a sip of my extra strong coffee here and we'll see if any float in. Okay, looks like we've come to a natural uh, stopping point, which is perfectly fine. I wanna thank all of you for being here with us in the webinar, again, whether you're watching live or whether you're watching the recording, uh, whether you are live or whether you're watching the recording, there's gonna be an email coming because you registered and you'll be able to download all the materials that we shared today, including the slide deck. I wanna say thank you to everybody who's been here. Thank you especially to those who asked questions and thank you to the wonderful WordWrite team who made this webinar possible today not only by the logistics of, of making it happen today, but also through their hard work to help uncover, develop, and share the great capital S stories of the many clients we've worked with over the years. Thanks again, folks. Appreciate your time. Look forward to hearing from many of you in the days and weeks to come. Have a great rest of your day.